Welcome to Ms. Mojo, and today we're examining where you know the cast of Daisy Jones and the Six from. What? Do we need, what? The, do, do, do we need the audience? You mean the band? She's talking about us? For this list, we'll be looking at where you may recognize the stars of this musical drama. We'd love it if you left us six comments, but we'll settle for one. Number 10. Nabia B. Nabia B plays Simone Jackson in Daisy Jones and the Six, a singer who also happens to be Daisy Jones' bestie. It's temporary. When the album comes out, I buy a place in the hills. You didn't tell me you're recording an album. <laughs> so no more singing backup then? Sure as I hope not. Though she's proving to be immensely talented, her list of acting credits isn't very long yet. Assuming you haven't seen the short film White Wedding, you'll likely only know B from her turn as Linda in Marvel's 2018 blockbuster Black Panther. <laughs> MCU fans will already know why she wasn't in the sequel. Still, B is showing everyone what she can do on Daisy Jones and the Six, and we can't wait to see what else she accomplishes in the future. Let's go again. I think I can beat it. Well, why don't you come in here and listen to that take first, because I, I think that's about as good as we're going to get. Okay. Number 9. Sebastian Chacon Sebastian Chacon's IMDb page only dates back to the mid-2010s, but you need to scroll for longer than you'd expect to see everything he's done. Guess I better gas up the van. You think she's gonna make it? <laughs> I think she's gonna make it. Chacon spent the last seven years or so mostly making guest appearances on various television shows, but it's his work in the 2020s that is probably his most recognizable. In 2020, he had a recurring role as Fly Rico in the Penny Dreadful spin-off, Penny Dreadful City of Angels. And while you're on Prime Video watching Chacon play drummer Warren on Daisy Jones and the Six, you can also catch him in the 2022 movie Emergency. What the hell is going on? We don't know who she is. Actually, she just told me that she's in high school. No! no! Number 8. Will Harrison Harrison is yet another newcomer to the screen whose big break is his role in Daisy Jones and the Six. You're not gonna stick around? Check us out? It's gonna be a good show. He plays Graham Dunn, the lead guitarist of the band during their skyrocket to superstardom. He's also the one who initially has the idea to start a band with his older brother back before the Six are officially born. And the band was, you know, it was just a distraction, an escape, you know? I mean, none of us never thought of it as anything more than that. Not even Billy. Harrison has been in some shorts and appeared in a 2022 film called This Is A Film About My Mother. But besides that, his only other credit prior to Daisy Jones was one episode of Madam Secretary. So if you do recognize him, it's probably from there. But if you ask us, the best is surely yet to come. What's the worst that can happen? Um, the band breaks up okay. and everyone hates me and I look like an absolute idiot. So. Seems kind of worth it to me. Number seven, Timothy Oliphant. That one, he's the rock star. If you're watching Daisy Jones and the Six and find yourself wondering where you know tour manager Rod Ray is from, there are many possible answers. After all, actor Timothy Oliphant has been working in television and movies since the 90s. You want to be signed to a label? You want to work with Jimmy Miller, Tom Dowd, Teddy Price. You know Teddy Price? Yeah, man, I know everybody, and they're all in L.A. now. So maybe you remember him from the first season of Sex and the City. Or maybe it's from his turn as Raylan Givens on Justified, an FX show from the 2010s. Or did you see Once Upon a Time in Hollywood? Well, Oliphant was James Stacy in that movie. Many might also know him as the good-looking enemy salesman on The Office. And those are just some of the possibilities. We were trying to watch you to see your sales technique so we could stop losing so many clients to you. Watch from where? A surveillance room next to this one. Number six, Tom Wright. You became a, a father figure to the kids that you worked with. I hadn't planned on being anyone's father, Murph. <laughs> <laughs> I just wanted to make records. As a big-time record producer, Teddy Price, played by Tom Wright, is a key member of the team behind the mega-success of the Daisy Jones and the Six Band. Wright has been in the business for decades and will be very recognizable to fans of the Barbershop movies from the early aughts. We got a surveillance tape from the uh, 
camera at the check cashing place next door. By the end of the day, I will know something. And although he only appeared in four episodes of Seinfeld, he left his mark as Mr. Morgan, George Costanza's colleague. And don't worry, Star Trek fans, we didn't forget about you. Or the fact that Wright played Tuvix the hybrid on an episode of Star Trek Voyager. Oh, I'm not worried. I couldn't be in better hands. This crew, your consummate professionals. Number five, Josh Whitehouse. I can do it, guys. Yeah, Eddie, I can do it. I'm a better guitarist than Billy. I can sing almost as good. Come on, just give me a chance. Although he puts on an American accent to play the band's bassist, Eddie Roundtree, actor Josh Whitehouse is English and was born in the UK. And as fans of British television might remember, Whitehouse's first television role had him playing Lieutenant Hugh Armitage in seasons three and four of Poldark. Wholly disorientated. Shipwrecked. Lost. Never seen the show? Well, did you see the 2020 movie Valley Girl? Whitehouse was one of the stars of that musical teen comedy. Or maybe, like so many of us, you're obsessed with Netflix holiday rom-coms? Then you must have seen him alongside Vanessa Hutchins in The Night Before Christmas. Brooke, I should have realized sooner. But you were my quest. I'm your quest? Yes, and my heart is eternally and devotedly yours. Number four, Suki Waterhouse. I've been in bands since I was 15, always looking for the one that would go the distance. As keyboardist Karen Serko, Suki Waterhouse is blazing the trail for women in the male-centric rock world of the 70s. We're not saying her character invented rock and roll, but you might know Waterhouse for her role as the titular girl in 2017's The Girl Who Invented Kissing. That same year, we also saw her playing the Queen's sister in the White Princess miniseries. Plus, Waterhouse is also a model and musician, and her song, Good Looking, even hit the UK charts. Meanwhile, Daisy Jones and the Six is only her fourth TV project, but she's been in over 20 movies, including Insurgent, the second installment in the Divergent trilogy. Look! I'm a lad! The traitor, Triss Pryor must be surrendered to erudite, or every day more death will follow. Number three, Camila Marone. Do you think that I moved here for you? Because I, I didn't, I moved here with you, Billy, for us. Camila Marone doesn't play Daisy Jones, nor is she technically part of the band, though she's dubbed the sixth member in the series. But in a way, her character, also named Camila, is at the heart of the story, given her relationship with the band's singer, Billy Dunn. If you love her, I don't. What if you ever do? That is when this ends. Do you understand? As of 2023, Marone's acting resume isn't very long, but you might have seen her playing Jordan, daughter to Bruce Willis's Paul, in the 2018 Death Wish remake. And if you recognize Josh Whitehouse from the Valley Girl movie, then you might also remember Marone from said film. If she still looks familiar to you, but you can't quite figure out why, you probably know her from her modeling work. I, I like have a tendency to play these like dark, sad characters, and Camilla mm. was like all about light, and I and I surprisingly was kind of intimidated by playing someone who was all light and energy. Number two, Sam Claflin. We work hard. We stick together. We're gonna be the biggest f***ing band in the world someday. You trust me? Sam Claflin has been part of some pretty popular television shows and movies in his relatively young career thus far, which is a testament to his talent. Perhaps his most popular role was that of Finnick O'Dare in some of the wildly successful Hunger Games films from the 2010s. What did you do with all your wealth anyway? I haven't dealt in anything as common as money in years. Well, then how do people pay for the pleasure of your company? With secrets. You might have also caught him on Netflix playing Mycroft Holmes, sibling to Millie Bobby Brown's character in Enola Holmes. On the TV side, the British actor notably played Sir Oswald Mosley on Peaky Blinders before becoming singer Billy Dunn on Daisy Jones and the Six. No matter what you're watching him in, you likely won't be disappointed. <laughs> Before 
Before we continue, be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. You have the option to be notified for occasional videos or all of them. If you're on your phone, make sure you go into your settings and switch on notifications. Number 1. Riley Keough Give it up for the titular Daisy Jones and the actress who so wonderfully brings her to life, Riley Keough. You guys want me to stay for one more? They wouldn't let me leave. If you didn't already know, she's related to none other than Elvis Presley. Indeed, she's the late star's granddaughter, but she's also made quite a name for herself in the entertainment industry. I've seen you too, honey. Gazaris, whiskey, all over the strip. Most of them girls are just there for drugs, sex, stories to tell their friends. But not you. The first years of her acting career were spent in the movies, playing relatively smaller parts in some big productions like Magic Mike and Mad Max Fury Road. However, it was arguably her starring role on the first season of The Girlfriend Experience that really got her noticed. And along with Daisy Jones and the Six, you can also see Keo on another Prime series, The Terminal List, which premiered in 2022. A war comms caught you jumping over bonfires now. That's a Zoroastrian New Year's celebration, New Raws. Well, oh, I can see how that's operationally relevant. Do you agree with our picks? Check out this other recent clip from Ms. Mojo. And be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.